Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to talk two in the uh, creator stage four. Uh, apologies to those who are watching online. We still are having technical difficulties. Um, and so we only have the slides on the screen. Uh, we are working on it. Hopefully we'll have it for the next talk. Um, but I would like to introduce uh, Blackus uh, on his talk, uh, From Easy Wins to Epic Challenges, uh, the Bounty Hunter Edition. Give him a round of applause. Hey, everyone. So I present you uh, a bit of my journey in Bag Bounty. I tried to select uh, some bugs that were quite surprising surprising in the sense of being very easy or being very difficult. So I will present uh, a couple of fun bugs. So a bit about myself. So I'm doing bug bounty for seven years now. I did a lot of CTFSO for 15 years or something like that. And in general, I'm working for 18 years now. So that's quite a long time I'm doing that. I'm definitely a web application enjoyer. Uh, I love PHP, who doesn't? And I love doing some source code review. Uh, I'm definitely not a recon guy, not doing anything like reconnaissance or something like that. I'm just going to main apps and break them, most of the time at least. I really love uh, like complex chain, uh, com uh, complex exploit or things like that. And yeah, uh, in my backband journey, I did something around like $2 million across all platforms. And I'm also uh, like an ambassador for France. So yeah, I'm French. That explains my pretty bad English. I'm sorry for that. Uh, if something isn't clear, don't hesitate to come later and just ask me. So we'll begin with a uh, first customer, uh, Swisscom. So I will present a couple of bags I found on them. Um, Swisscom uh, is the biggest telco provider in Switzerland. They are doing a lot of things, not only telcos, they are active pretty much everywhere. Uh, they decided to open a white card bag bounty program in uh, 2016. That was my first bag bounty experience. I started like end of 2016 on them. And that's a pretty good team, to be honest. Uh, they're pretty fair, they're pretty kind, good communication with them. Uh, they have a very big scope, like millions of IP addresses, so it's pretty cool. And I did something like, I want like $500,000 on them, so yeah, that's quite good. Um, definitely the bag bounty, uh, they decided to open, uh, definitely, definitely improved their security uh, their security stuff over time. And yeah, the bugs I'm presenting now are quite old. Uh, definitely, they're like pretty much uh, other stuff now, but still quite some cool bugs. So if some people here are interested by uh, their bug bounty programs, they're outside of any platform, you can just take a peek of the URL. Everything is, is uh, explained there. So let's talk about uh, first target, which is Swisscom Cockpit. Uh, that's the mobile phone manager in Swisscom. That's basically where you can see your subscrip subscription and where you can just buy some packs for traveling and things like that. Um, there is a lock-in process on it that is quite particular. It's just you uh, sending your phone number and you receive a SMS token. You need also to fill a captcha and you're logged in if the code is uh, valid, right? So it definitely manage uh, some serious uh, confidential data, a lot of PII payments, things like that. Uh, you can see everything that is related to subscri subscription on there. So definitely a good target for me. Also, uh, pretty good stuff for us. There is a staging instance on the internet that is like publicly available. Always cool, there might be some uh, stuff that is not published on the production server and things like that. So let's talk about the first bug. Uh, I saw that on the staging instance, the SMS token is always 1111, pretty good. Uh, the problem is the staging login doesn't work. It, it always throws some uh, internal server error. 
So I can't log in with it. And I was like, yeah, maybe that uh, the SMS central repository it might be like shared uh, with the prediction system. So I just try to log in on the prediction system, then try to log in on the staging system, then use one, 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 one on prediction system, and I was logged in. So that was a very simple uh, bug, but definitely a good impact. So let's see a demo if everything is working well. We should be able to see. Yeah, so I'm just entering a phone number, just trying to sign in, doing the same on the staging instance. And now trying on the prod instance to just input 1111, filling the captcha, sign in, and I'm signed in. So, yeah, pretty easy. Uh, that's not video of the, in the, the, the real system. I reproduced everything locally. I will share the demo, uh, the demo's video and the instances uh, a bit later of, after the talk. So, yeah. This was paid $8,000, which is pretty good because that was super easy, but that uh, had a nice impact for them because I had like PII of every customer there, uh, maybe millions of uh, PII there. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, second bag, so as I said, the login process is uh, pretty easy. You just input uh, your phone number, you submit, then uh, you receive uh, SMS codes that you need to submit with a CAPTCHA. But the process is also setting you uh, three encrypted cookies. The first one is a cockpit CAPTCHA text. Uh, it definitely, by the name, I guess, it definitely manages CAPTCHA text. Uh, the cockpit MSIS DN key that manages the phone numbers that you input at the first step. And the cockpit SMS token key, which I guess is a pin code that was received by SMS. So I was like, okay, maybe they are using like the same tree, the same key for encryption. So I decided to like copy the cockpit SMS token key cookie into the cockpit captcha text, reload the page, and the pin code is just leaked into the captcha. So here it is. That's not very clear because there is some uh, maybe uh, padding issue, but you can see the, the code there that is 7998. So that's, once again, an authentication bypass by leaking uh, the SMS pin token into the CAPTCHA, which is like pretty lame, but pretty good for me. So let's do a small, if I can move that. Here it is, another demo. So just filling the phone number again, trying to see the cookies, putting the SMS token key into the CAPTCHA text uh, cookie, just reloading, and we get uh, the pin code into the CAPTCHA, which is uh, RK, RRKB5T. That's a pin code I received by SMS, so I'm once again uh, logged in with that. So, pretty cool, but definitely uh, not as serious as the previous bug, but because it was pretty hard to see, to read the CAPTCHA, you can't really automate the attack, so they decided to pay $3,000 for that. Once again, it was quite an easy bug, so I can complain uh, on the amount, so I decided it might be the time to stop on cockpit. But no, here is a uh, uh, third bug. Uh, try to log in, input your phone number, but at the time you receive the SMS pin code, just cancel and authentication successful. I have no idea why. <laughs> I, I suppose they did something bad by patching uh, some of my bugs. Uh, yeah, probably a fail. So they decided to pay uh, 8,000 for that because I just canceled the login process and I was logged in. Uh, I suppose you don't expect a demo for that. I mean, that's not really needed, I guess. So for this time, let's really move on to another targets. So uh, Swisscom Worklink uh, is a Swisscom acquisition that was like 
a company that just bought. I decided to have a check. They were using a completely unknown CMS called Weblication, something in PHP, you know, that triggered me always. Uh, so I decided to uh, buy a Weblication license uh, so I can grab the code and turn that into like some source card review. Uh, Firstly, I saw that the thing is not using SQL at all. Uh, it's only some uh, XML databases and some uh, file system storage, which is quite not so usual. So, firstly, I saw that uh, they have a general pass traversal prevention mechanism, and in general, uh, they are trying like to sanitize every uh, every variable that you can input. There is an easy bypass because they are like uh, trying to remove uh, pass traversal characters and later in the process they're trying to remove pipes so you can just like uh, use uh, dot pipe dot pipe slash and it will be transformed to pipe uh, to dot dot slash so there is like an easy bypass of the uh, mechanism to prevent pass traversal so I decided to have a look for some pass traversal issues uh, I have found pretty easily uh, a vulnerability that allowed me to delete all the files uh, in a directory, but uh, it wasn't uh, reachable but because it checked for a specific directory on the app that was never used anywhere, so there is no way to create that uh, directory. But I found uh, an arbitrary directory creation, which is generally something that is quite useless, but for that case, it was quite useful for me, so I created the directory that was needed uh, to reach the directory empty vulnerability. Uh, so cool, I can delete files in directories, uh, but come on, that's not useful. I'm definitely not wanting to deface their website, that's definitely not the goal. So uh, I did, I, I had a check. And uh, in the replication slash grid, uh, grid uh, five directory, there is a dot .htxs file, that's the only file there. But in the subdirectories, there is like all the databases, uh, all the XML databases there. Uh, the only uh, mechanism of protection there is the dot .htxs file. So maybe we can just remove the dot .htxs file so we can access the XML databases then. For some reason, I don't know why, but they decided uh, to uh, name all their XML databases with a uh, .php extension. That's quite a strange uh, decision, but I found that uh, the logs, uh, the login logs uh, dat database is containing uh, the session token for all users there, so I can just read it. That's an authentication bypass. That's a win. No. It works locally, it doesn't work remotely. I have like uh, internal server error everywhere, so I was quite in despair, I was crying a bit. Um, so my guess was uh, my, uh, so Worklink was using uh, PHP short tags, so uh, it clashed with uh, XML open tags, so the, the system was uh, thinking that the XML file was some PHP, it broke because of some syntax error and so just throw internal server errors, so definitely didn't work. I decided to go and say search uh, other vulnerabilities. I found a pre RC there, but it failed again for the exact same reason, so I cried a bit again. And I found something that was maybe interesting but quite lame, I didn't see the impact at first. I found the XM injection in the locked user database. Uh, so pretty much the same, it's also uh, PHP extension uh, in the same directories. So uh, the, the injection is on the username and that's like the database that contains uh, if a username is uh, blocked by the system. So if you're trying to log in uh, with a specific username more than three times and the login is failed, you're like injected in that uh, specific database. So there is a XML injection there. Okay, not so useful. I can block arbitrary users maybe, but yeah, quite lame. So 
I did have a check on how uh, the XML database are passed by the application. Uh, I saw that uh, the developers uh, did that quite well. They decided to add some layers of protection, uh, trying to prevent uh, xInclude by calling dumb document uh, xInclude function with a false parameter. No luck for them, uh, thanks PHP. Uh, it enabled xInclude instead, so definitely not what they wanted. Uh, so for those that don't know, xInclude is a XML feature that allow to include other XML or even not XML document into the current ones. That's like exactly like PHP include, but for XML. So trying to put uh, that username will definitely uh, add a X include directive that will load uh, the login logs database into the uh, blocked users database. Uh, that's that's a notation for X include directive. Uh, that's a bit complicated, but yeah, definitely the impact there is like we can just include the entire uh, login logs database into the block user database. But oh yeah, Xinclude is doing their best to like reformat or the file to be a fully valid XML. You can't break, you can't really break uh, the file by using Xinclude, which is quite good. Is doing like automatic correction and things like that, but. But no, that's still useless. I mean, yeah, I can include the database into another, but that's quite useless. But I tried to see how the log users feature is working, and I found a blind XPath injection. So in the username, is you, if you can, if you inject uh, some XPath uh, notation, you have uh, an injection there. So you can definitely extract the entire log, log database. And I guess you see uh, what the interest there, we can uh, inject uh, the content of other database uh, in, in the log database, and then we can like exfiltrate it. So the log database, uh, yes, I, I, I would say that. But uh, so we can choose a, a blind XPath injection, we can exfiltrate session token byte by a byte per byte. That gave me admin take over on the application and that time in the admin panel there is like feature to get RC. So this time is a win. It works remotely. So the chain was lock user with uh, XML injection in the username plus the X include directive pointing to the XML logs, exfiltrate it with XPath injection, get admin session, get RC, and let, let's go for a demo. So we can see there on the right that the block database is empty. Now we try to log in with X uh, to see that just the block database is now filled with uh, one entry for the X, uh, X uh, user. We now try to inject some XML to see if there is an XML injection there. And yes, it is. There is now a FUBA attribute uh, in the in the block, uh, block uh, entry. So that time we we're using the payload that uh, we saw before with the X include directive, trying to include uh, the login logs uh, in, the, in the block database. So yeah, we, I just saw that the login log contains some uh, session stuff there. So we make that user with the payload to be blocked. We can see that our xinclude directive is now there in the file of the blocked uh, database. We make uh, another user, another random user to be blocked, so the file will be passed again, and this time there is like the entire login log database in that blocked database. So this time it was completely replaced uh, by, the, by the original login logs file. So now we can try to use uh, the XPath injection. So we are like targeting uh, a log element, trying to exfiltrate the session. We're, check we're checking if it begins by a L. We know it is because we can see that on the right screen. So if it begins by a L, 
we should receive that the account is blocked, but if we check uh, if it back in by X, we receive that no user is found. So we have an oracle to leak uh, the characters one by one. So I write a little script. And yeah, it definitely leaks the session token character by character. So yeah, we got, we got an admin account to that and get RC remotely. For that, uh, Swisscom decided to pay me $3,000. So uh, 2,500 for the bug, uh, 500 uh, for the um, for, uh, uh, bonus for the nice chain, and also the editor decided to uh, reward me for, with uh, $2,000. They didn't have a bug bounty, but they were like impressed by the bug, so pretty cool for the, for, from them. So now let's switch to yet another customer. Uh, another Swiss one, uh, so Swiss Post. I'm not sure I need to explain what is Swiss Post. Pretty standard, they are like the postal office in Switzerland, but they are also a private company uh, doing a lot of different things. In, they are like involved in a lot of uh, major projects in Switzerland, like e voting. Uh, they decide, uh, they, they're also very active in cybersecurity. They like bought a lot of local. Uh, cyber security, security companies, so, so they are like very active in the cyber security uh, stuff in Switzerland. They decided to start a uh, bug bounty in 2019, uh, especially for their e-voting platform, uh, and they decided to add uh, assets uh, over time. So that's a super fair team, they're pretty good, pretty much the same as Swisscom to be honest. Uh, we can have a lot of uh, communication with them. They're pretty good. And yeah, if some people are from the voting village, uh, go on their bag bounty programs. They are paying like uh, 230K for a very critical bug there. That's definitely a good program. I'm not a crypto guy, so I'm not going bad. Maybe you are. So if you want to have a check, uh, everything is described on their VDP page. So vdp.post.ch. So uh, for, for the first bag, I will talk about their uh, payment system. So they have like their own payment system, uh, completely custom. Uh, everything is quite common. You get some sign requests. Uh, there's a lot of different endpoints for failure and success. And uh, also you can stack money on your account, on your postal account. You have a balance system, so it's always interesting if we can get like infinite money there. I will switch this back because we have some time issue. Let's go on the second one. So I did find a lot of uh, stuff there, so I was uh, hacking on them, and I was trying to manipulate some payment session there, uh, changing price in a, trans a transaction, uh, a lot of things, but. Uh, a delivery man rang the doorbell in my office, so I need to cut the package, sing everything. I decided that was the time for a coffee break. And then after maybe 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, got back to my chair, and I had some money coming from nowhere on my account, so I had no idea why. <laughs> so I decided to replay everything I did, I was like, Probably I triggered something and I didn't even know. So I tried to replay everything. So that failed. No idea what happened. So I did to replay everything, including the coffee break. That was maybe the main point. So I did a coffee break with a colleague and there was, <laughs> my account was created it again. So I was like, okay, what, what the fuck? I tested a lot of things. And the real explanation is uh, when you run the transaction, after the transaction is timed out, so you didn't uh, make the payment uh, in the good time frame, it's just considered successful. So probably a bad check of payment states, it default to success instead of default, uh, defaulting to uh, a failure. So yeah, let's go for a demo. So let's buy a very good croissant because I'm French. 
Ah, oh, that's not a good damn oil. Another crescent, a bigger one. Let's go for it. Just wait, just go grab a coffee maybe. Are you patient enough? Ah, yeah. No, I'm joking, it will just last. Yeah, success payments, just by waiting. I mean, pretty cool. A pretty good solution to get some money, right? So uh, I was paid uh, $3,000 for that. Uh, that probably is the most I get for like a coffee break or two. Definitely was quite profitable, right? So uh, let's go to another project of them. Uh, they have like a subdomain uh, using a very, very unknown uh, CMS. So Pepper Shop, that's like a Swiss PHP CMS. They also do some manage hosting and things like that. I never heard of them. So I decided once again to buy a license uh, of the CMS so I get access to the code. Once again, it's PHP, so I'm super interested by that. And I just had a look at the code. Everything was quite, you know, PHP. Uh, so I saw that uh, an admin feature uh, that is quite interesting is a restore backup thing. Uh, it's some like custom things. They decided that the delimiter between SQL queries will be that stuff. No idea why. Why don't you use like semicolon like everyone do? I don't know. They decided it is. And they also have uh, some features I never, I don't know why because I didn't see any occurrences where they are using that, but they do. So if you use uh, the base64 start and the base64 end tags, that will be replaced by a single coded string of uh, the, uh, the base64 decoded string that is between the tag. I don't know why. I, I, that's quite a strange feature, to be honest. So uh, the restore backup, uh, the restore uh, feature is using a backup from a local file system uh, that needs to be generated from the CMS backup feature. So uh, you can't upload anything or something like that. So my goal was maybe I can inject SQL queries in backup from the front end. Uh, the method is exploiting the very like strange passing to break SQL contexts. So my idea is uh, if I use like so specific uh, separator or uh, like tags in some data uh, that is stored in the database, uh, so, uh, that will be stored in the database, uh, maybe when they will back up and restore again, that would break something if I get some data with those tags, uh, maybe on my profile, on my, I don't know, username, name, all the comments and all things like that. The first problem is uh, most fields are sanitized by default. That's like a global sanitiz uh, sanitization that is done on every field. And so no, no new lines, no hash, no special characters in general. And the second problem is that if the restore fail on one SQL query, it's like ending the process and not going further in the file. I mean, for the first problem, the solution is quite easy. Most uh, fields are sanitized, but not all. They are like exception. One of them are like uh, comments that are put on the orders, so I can definitely reach that field uh, on the front end. And the second uh, problem, we have like a separate between queries and way to inject single code. So that should be possible uh, to get like a valid file after injecting things. So let's imagine uh, a, a valid SQL query in the file format. So we control fully the values of Bemerkugen. I have no idea what it means, but that's the name of the database, uh, of the uh, table. I have no idea what it is. So we can control that fully, and you can see the separator at the end. So we're trying to use their base64 feature to break from single codes. So we're trying to get something like that. 
that will be transformed to that. So we inject a single quote, a parenthesis, a comment, and that is working pretty well, to be honest. So then my goal is to inject new queries in the packet file. So this time I'm also adding uh, a separator and a new uh, query with a comment at the end. So after being uh, uh, passed by the restore procedure that will give that, and that's definitely valid. So I was able to uh, just inject uh, an update to uh, an arbitrary table, changing arbitrary column there, pretty good. Um, so the impact is I can run arbitrary queries on the restore process if they take a backup and restore, that will run my queries. Pretty good, but uh, the database is obviously that's PHP, uh, storing some serialized uh, PHP objects because, you know, relational databases is done for that, storing full objects. So I found uh, pretty fastly a custom gadget uh, that allowed to delete local files. Once again, not the most interesting primitive for us because that's definitely not a goal to delete uh, files on them. But I saw that uh, the admin authentication mechanism is just uh, .hd access file, so that's just a basic authentication system. So if we delete the .hd access file, uh, everyone can go to slash admin, and our admin, just that, there's no authentication besides that, so just like you need either valid credential or you need to pipe as a .hd access. The payload is too big for the screen, I'm sorry. So let's get a demo for this one. Once again, super crescent shop. So we put the payload uh, in the order commands. You can see the payload there, it's pretty big. It's just uh, trying to update the other table and set uh, a big uh, serialized uh, object in the data of the orders. So now my user have uh, like another with uh, or, uh, or tags uh, or by base64 tags. So let's go to an administrator account. Let's do a backup. Yeah, that's a fail. Let's go to the backup. Let's log in. So let's do a backup and now trying to restore it. No, not before restoring it. We can see in the order that uh, we have like all data that is injected uh, in the order. So now trying to restore, that's definitely not the same data. We were able to update the order and add like a serialized object that definitely have a pass traversal to the htaccess file. So let's go see the order that triggered uh, the serialized objects, and now we can go to the admin panel and there is no more authentication on it. So, yeah, that definitely deleted uh, the HT access, so everyone is admin, which is, uh, to be honest, a bit uh, frightening because, like, by exploiting that, I gave everyone admin access. Oops. So, they pay me uh, $650 which is quite bad, but uh, the real uh, thing is that Swiss Post is not using the backup and restore feature because they have too much data and the official backup feature there is just crashing because there is too much data. You know, like problem of memory issues and things like that. That's even fair, they decided to pay a bounty for that because they are like, no chance they are using the backup and restore features there. So, yeah, still quite firm. Let's go on another customer, the most known one, Redacted. Uh, I wasn't able to name them, so let's consider that uh, we just put a bit of context. Imagine a PHP CMS, once again PHP, 
widely used uh, with a lot of complex code, complex features, and a little blacklist scrutinizing the code at every release, every time. So first bug, there is a new CV there. Uh, that's a Prius SE to a SSTI in the wild, like used by a straight actor. So the maintainers decided to make an emergency patch. I decided to reverse it, obviously. Uh, so uh, there is like a double level of templating uh, on the app. And the patch from uh, the maintainers was just a preg replace to uh, remove uh, the tags just after a single evaluation of the templates. Uh, the problem is, maybe someone saw that? You saw that, I know. The regex is not matching new lines. Uh, that means that you can just use the original payload, but use a new line before the closing tags you're bypassing that regex, and that's like a pre again. That was paid uh, $10,000 because, you know, pre are always cool. And small bonus, my colleague uh, also found another bypass. You just had to not close the tags. So that was enough. Uh, templates uh, will contain some tags, ending tags later. So, yeah, that's also bypass it. So, and as a second bag, and I'm sorry, this one will be quite complex. I will try my best to explain it uh, correctly, but yeah, that's a complex one. So, I found a bag uh, that is, to be honest, barely exportable, but it's super fun technically. So, the worst impact uh, to this was uh, Prius SE but uh, the precondition of it make it quite unlikely, but yeah, it's still a fun one. So for the context, uh, that application uh, was using Lamina's PHP library to, for everything that is using like emails. Lamina's is doing a lot of checks and transformation to be sure that the email is valid and things like that. There's like a lot of different libraries there. And on the application we're testing, uh, we have uh, control over a from header that will be uh, used for sending some emails. So that from header will be passed uh, over the fifth argument of mail for those who know. Uh, Mail function uh, have a fifth argument that is like arguments that will be passed to the send mail uh, binary. So if that fifth argument is uh, completely controlled by an attacker, you can have like argument injection to the send mail binary. There are like known exploit to that, uh, but it definitely depends on the MTA that is used. So uh, every MTA is chipped with different send my binaries. So for this uh, talk, we will consider uh, send mail MTA here. That's like a first precondition. Why send mail? Because I'm cheating. That's my bug. I decide whatever is the condition. So that's what uh, I want to be. So. Uh, the problem is Lamina's validating email address. We can't like put anything that is not a valid email address. Uh, Lamina's is supporting a coded string uh, format, so uh, double quotes and pretty much anything, or dot atom format, that's like the standard uh, email format. Uh, for that, they are using super big regex, uh, that was super hard to read. And yeah, the thing is, uh, they're also using uh, escape shell lag uh, on the email before being used on the uh, mail function. But uh, PHP is automatically applies escape shell command to the entire command uh, when calling mail uh, that will apply escape shell command to send mail. Uh, double escape means uh, no escape at all, means argument injection, thanks PHP. So another problem is uh, Lamina or the application, I don't know. 
is uh, lowercase in your email, and every exploit for uh, send mail are generally using uh, the C and the X uppercase arguments with very long paths. And the other problem is we are limited to 64 characters for the local parts. And definitely, if you need like long paths uh, for two arguments, that's definitely not cool because we are like limited in size. Painful. I was like a bit in despair. I was pretty sure that won't be exportable at all. But yeah, I still decided to make like those of testing. I was pretty much like that after a few years. But at some point, I saw that uh, there was like a stranger if my email contains uh, uh, right angle brackets. So if I put XSX uh, right angle bracket at black.is, I received by the app invalid domain black.is right bracket. I was like, that's, that's strange. That's definitely not the domain I put in my mail. So I decided to debug a bit the behavior. So Laminas uh, did uh, the validation of the email. Laminas and the app uh, were crafting a full email with the headers and the body and put the email in the from uh, header. Then uh, Laminas passed the generated email. Then the app is extracting the sender again from it, validates that it's still a valid email. So painful process. So I was like, OK, but that doesn't explain the error. So that's a traditional from header. So it's just uh, double quotes your name, double quotes, and in brackets, uh, the full email. But when I tried to inject XXX right brackets at black.is, that was like the form that was generated. So we have like an injection in the email part, but that's quite useless, in my opinion. Uh, there was like no CR left. There was like protection and mechanism to prevent that. So I was like, okay, that's definitely useless. But I decided to like investigate because that's quite a dirty thing still, so yeah. I read uh, a lot of RFC, a lot of documentation, and I saw there is like something called uh, my encoded words. So uh, that's described by uh, the RFC 2047. That's for using special characters in uh, email headers and bodies. That's the format, so uh, equacing, uh, interrogation point, car set, encoding, and then you can use like uh, literal characters using the hexadecimal code uh, with uh, equacing. So in that case, I'd like generate AAA. So all the characters that is used uh, in the MIME encoded words notation are also valid characters in an email address at least uh, in the double, uh, double cut encoded formats. So I was like, maybe I can inject my encoded words in my uh, sender email. So uh, that will be put in the mail headers and when extracted back by Laminas, it will like pass the my encoded words and generate an email that will maybe contain uh, some uh, parameter injection to send mail. So. Uh, I needed uh, some spaces to like inject another argument to send mail, uh, but uh, equal 20 is forbidden by the specification of the RFC, but I found that uh, underscore is defined as a space by the RFC, so we can uh, just input uh, spaces by using an underscore. Don't ask me why, if there is probably a reason for that. So. As we saw, uh, the send mail, uh, send mail payload is always uh, needing to point to a local configuration file. So we need to have uh, a control of a malicious local file. Fortunately for us, the CMS have uh, an OS file upload, so we can upload files there. The problem is uh, the upload folder contains underscore, but underscore are replaced by spaces but we can replace uh, underscore by uh, equal 5F character. So that's a problem, but not so much. The problem is uh, we 
need a lot of replacement character and the size limitation is still 64 characters and the MIME encoded words uh, increase the size of a string by quite a lot. So let's consider that uh, web root is uh, slash app. That's short, that's definitely what I need. So I'm still uh, cheating again. So uh, that's another precondition. The, the first one is you need send mail to be used and you need uh, a short uh, web route. So yeah, that's quite some strong precondition. So I knew that send mail payload I using uh, the C and the X uh, arguments. That's definitely too long for us. So I was like, okay, uh, the C argument is uh, loading arbitrary config file. Maybe that's enough to SE. Maybe we don't need the uh, X argument. So I decided to focus on that and see what is possible to send me config file. So in the config file, you have like the path to the dead letter file. So the dead letter is like where it will, it will log uh, like incidents in sending emails. So maybe we can like uh, put uh, a file that will be in the web route and have maybe a file write, but we don't control anything in the mail. And there is also uh, a bound second recipient in that config file that will be included in the dead letter because that will like, you have an email that is failed, but then it will try to send to that second recipient and it will write that in the dead letter file. So maybe we can have arbitrary file writes, or at least uh, a partial arbitrary file write, but that's PHP, so if I have just uh, a partial file write, that would be enough to get a valid PHP file. So I just sent uh, a default send mail MTA config, and uh, the two uh, option uh, to get arbitrary file write, and that, that was sufficient. So then I'm sending the mail to not existent at localhost, so it fails, so that will bounce. So that are the, the, the configs that I was using. So I decided to have a look at the MIME encoded words and trying to like reduce the size of it. Uh, I was able to win some size, like you can just empty the car set, there is no need of uh, filling it. Uh, don't, uh, we, yeah, we need double cuts around the payload because uh, the email need to, be, need to be valid and you need to use a double cutted uh, format. Don't ask me why, but we need we needed to end it with uh, two double cuts. I have no idea, that's magic. I didn't investigate that. So we can definitely use the uppercase later now because we have the MIME encoded words. Uh, so 64 cars is still too short, but with the precondition of having a short web route and everything that just enter exactly uh, the, the 64 characters, so it's uh, upper pass, and the final payload was just that. Don't ask me why it's that some magic, uh, definitely some magic payload. I have now a T-shirt but it's my, in my hotel room with a payload printed on it. Uh, yeah, that's quite a unusual payload and it is to Prius SE on the top in very specific conditions. So yeah, that was just uh, setting the file we uploaded in the SendMail command, injecting a new uh, config file for SendMail, get arbitrary write some PHP in the web app, get RCE, works only on send me MTA, web root being short, so I cheated a bit, but yeah, you need some iron stars to exploit that, so definitely not, uh, not really export up in the wide, but still was quite fun technically. So let's go for a demo, the last one. Once again, the crescent shop. I'm just uploading as uh, send mail MTA default config file with just like or do two config keys. Yeah, doing the plot manually, sorry, it takes a bit of time.
So yeah, you can see that I'm putting the dead letter in the slash app slash backdoor.php with a double bounce address containing a payload. So yeah, now the config file is uploaded. We can just run the payload in the from uh, in the from email. That's exactly the payload from the, the slides. We're sending that to uh, a localhost address that doesn't exist, so that should draw, draw an error. We see that the page is completely bunk because that generated a, an error. So now we can go to uh, the slash backdoor.php. We can see the data editor there, and I did add some backdoor there, and we get arbitrary PHP uh, execution. So definitely quite cool. So that was paid $5,000 uh, despite the fact that it was uh, hardly exploitable. Uh, it made me cry a bit. I spent a lot of time on it. So I hope your brain fried exactly uh, like me. And that's my end word. So uh, thanks for having listened to the end. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned some things. And also, I will maybe soon open a blog, uh, a blog with a lot of my bugs. There's like 100 of them. So yeah, follow me on Twitter if you want some news. And thank you.